What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back doing another preview video for the final week of international rugby that's going to be going on for the year of 2022. It is of course the final weekend of the autumn internationals. So as we do in these preview videos, we're going to check out the teams that have been announced, have a run through them, who we think some good picks, some bad picks, go over some team tactics we think might be employed in the game, and then finally give a score prediction. Only two games this weekend. We will be doing the England versus Springboks one later on today so make sure that you are subscribed to know when that video goes live as well so this one Wales versus Australia it's a game we see a lot if weirdly it's in every single World Cup it's just every autumn internationals it, it feels like a game we see a lot normally some pretty close rivalries it's it's not really ever one team just steamrolling the other team there's normally you know only a few points in it whether it's both teams scoring incredibly low or both teams getting over that 30 point marker uh, right, who should we talk about first? Let's talk about Wales. Because Wales last week, of course, played Georgia and lost at home with a good team <laughs> against a Georgia team who the week previously lost to a 14-man Samoa team. Uh, it's been quite interesting to hear a lot of the discourse around that, seeing you know people's comments, look at things on Twitter, see what's going on with that. A very weird game. Uh, Georgia absolutely threw the garden shed at it and said, we're just going to give everything we've got for this one. And Wales came across, and I don't know what it is. It, I don't want to call it arrogance. I think people might call it confidence, but I feel like it borders on arrogance. It reminded me so much of the Wales-Italy game. There seems to be a belief against lower end tier one or tier two teams. Wales seem to have done this thing recently where they just think they're going to win and it will just happen. You don't need to be kicking for three points. You don't need to be trying to work out a set plan. You don't need to be working out how you're going to do your strike runners. You just, just play the game and you'll win because it's this team and i don't know what it is it came across in that wales italy game in the six nations and it came back to bite them you think they would take so much from that game not underestimate any team show every team the same amount of respect and play the game like you're there to win in georgia man what a win for george they were really really happy with their win but wales got an awful lot to work on going into this week so checking out the team that has been announced we've got the exact same starting front row as we did last week gareth thomas ken owens dylan lewis now ken owens actually had a bit of a shaky line out last week as well it's probably the first week we've really seen him where his lineouts haven't really been on points and then doubling down at scrum time Wales were in desperate trouble against that Georgia scrum. The malls weren't making meters. Scrums were getting run over. Line out not doing very well. As soon as that set piece breaks, uh, there's some big issues there. So I'm sure these lads will have been training hard over the last week to uh, sort themselves out. In the lock department then, Adam Beard comes in alongside Alan Wynne-Jones. So Ben Carter gets moved back to the bench. Of course, there's still not going to be Will Rowland's penalty issue has been a bit of a concern. Yellow carded in one game. So I think trying out some different tactics is probably better there. I reckon Alan Wynne jones is coming for the experience factor over Ben Carter. But I really think if you're not going to be winning games, at least give the new boys some time on the pitch. You know, at least that's something to work with. But I feel like this is one of those games Wales probably know they have to win. Pivak probably knows he has to win. Uh, so bringing Alan Wynne jones back in alongside Adam Beard. A lot of team chemistry there. Played a lot of caps together. A bit more experience maybe. In the back row then, Jack Morgan retains that six shirt. Still playing well. Got himself two tries last week. Thought he was playing extremely well. Probably the only player on the pitch that was really sort of showing off that he was meant to be there. Justin Tipperick retains that captaincy at seven. And Falatau comes back in in the number eight shirt. So no Josh McLeod. I um, don't think he, he was necessarily had a too terrible game. It was nice to see him finally get on for his uh, his Wales caps and his debut and what have you. But he has been moved to the bench this week. Again, I, I just an experience factor. Someone more used to being in that position, playing a team like Australia. Probably the reason you're going to see Falatau moving back in. Halfback partnership, Thomas Williams alongside Gareth Anscombe this week. Reese Priestland last week. Ooh, yeah, again, kicking decisions, a bit a bit wild, a bit weird. Uh, Wales being on the attack, only playing a few phases, kick it on, uh, in, uh, not really leading to anything, turning down three points opportunities when they were rose, you know, it's not really necessary. So so I think bringing Anscombe back on is probably a good move. It just gives you a few more attacking options, I think. I, I much prefer to see Gareth Anscombe there. In the centre partnership, Joe Hawkins comes in alongside George North. This is a, a big call. Centre partnership's not really been organised for, for Wales as of yet. I'm not too sure about injury status for a couple of people. I mean, it's interesting to see neither Nick Tonkins nor 
Owen Watkins on the bench either. Owen Watkins, I thought, was actually trying hard last week, just not really making the the big impact on the game. But I did think he was working hard. Joe Hawkins comes on in the inside centre. We'll see how he gets on. And then in that back three, Rio Dyer on the left wing, Alex Cuthbert on the right wing, and Lee Halfpenny at full back. I'm not a, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this call. I think there is, uh, you've got an inexperienced left wing. He's been playing well. He got himself a try. He's making a, a most of what he can do. We did see it against New Zealand, though. Uh, bigger players, power players. Uh, defensively, he maybe wasn't really holding them up. We've seen the Australian wingers. Uh, we'll have to see how he gets on. Alex Cuthbert, again, I don't think was making too much of an impact last week. Lee Halfpenny going back in at fullback. Uh, hopefully, you can avoid the injuries at the minute. Um, you know, he's an experienced fullback. It's probably good to have him there. Um, I would maybe be wanting to see Josh Adams or Zamet starting here. Now, Zamet's not even named on the bench this week, so I'm not sure if he's maybe picked up a twinge. I did see he was down in a pub in Cardiff celebrating the Wales football. Um, so, <laughs> a bit of a hangover, maybe leaning over. I haven't, I haven't caught up on that. I don't think there was an injury from what I read. Um, so, overall, 1 to 15. Changes have been made. Is it the the correct calls? I'm not sure. I think bringing back Alan Wynn and Tolube Falata was a move for experience and, and time playing against Australia. I like the idea of Gareth Anson coming in. Some big calls, though, with Joe Hawkins, Dyer, Cuthbert. Again, I think maybe you could have had Halfpenny on the bench for this one. Maybe you could have had Zamet in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this one, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. In terms of the replacements, then Ryan Elias, Rodri Jones, and Tom Francis. So, uh, not going to be any Sam Wainwright. I believe he has actually picked up a knock, so he won't be coming in this week. Tom Francis filling in um, in that tight head replacement shirt. Now, the subs came on last week, and Georgia dealt with them very well. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see how these boys hold up, because Australia gave, gave Ireland a hard game last week in terms of the scrummaging. So, We'll have to see how they got on, but I wasn't that impressed last week with uh, with how they performed against the Georgian team. The rest of the replacement forwards, Ben Carter and Josh McLeod. So not a very experienced bench going to be coming on. Uh, low caps across the board, but two players wanting to get more in the side. I really think if you're going to be playing these lads, play them from the start, I, I think would have been my call. I don't think that many people have got Wales pinned down to win this one. It's quite close. It's quite evenly scored, but... I feel like if you're going to play the low cap players, play them from the start, give them the experience to play in the tier one teams. Um, I don't see what this is going to do, bringing these lads on at 65, 70 minutes into a game. Let them play a full game. You're building towards the World Cup, last game of the year. I might have started them there, but again, they're trying to avoid that loss at all costs, I think. And then the replacement backs, Kieran Hardy, Reese Priestland, and Josh Adams. So Josh Adams, of course, can replace winger or fullback if you really need him to. Um, if there's another injury, Halfpenny could also move to wing if you need him to as well. Um, Reese Priestland, I don't think he's making a bad impact from the bench because uh, he offers a slightly different style to uh, to Anscombe. But I feel like Anscombe's a bit more attacking with the way that he plays with the bit ball. So I prefer to see him on there. And then Kieran Hardy, yeah, I think the, the starting number nine shirt is still up for grabs. Um, I think Thomas Williams is doing all right at Cement again at the minute, but big competition there. So overall, 123. Um, I don't know. I want to say this is like a a middle ground Wales team, to be honest. Um, if you can tell probably by the way, I've probably been doing this video already. There's not a great deal of confidence coming into this game. The performance we got to see against Georgia, really not the best. I think people are very concerned about going into this game, about how Wales are going to be able to perform. They have to have a big step up. Hopefully these changes are the right ones. On to Australia then, who last week played Ireland and could have won. Could have won. It was a tight scoreline, three-point difference in the end. Um, the bookies had that one down as Ireland to win by like 20 to 23 points. Australia came out, showed what they were going to bring. I have seen the Australian injury amount is enormous. I did see a thing the other day. If I can find it, I will put it up. Um, but it was talking about that Australia have so many injuries, you can make a starting 23. <laughs> with just their injuries. They are running thin at the minute, but you wouldn't have guessed it for that performance last week. Um, it was a bit of a stop-start game, a bit of a slow one. We did do the polls on the community poll thing. Some people not necessarily that into that game, a bit of a rough game to watch, but some real shining stars coming through for this Australia team. Lower cap players really trying to show off. So 
I I'm kind of excited to see what they can bring this week, to be fair. So checking out the team that's been announced. James Lipper, Fyinga, and Alan Alatoa. So no Parecki, who I think picked up an injury in that game as well. So he'll be missing out with this one. Lock department, Nick Frost, and Katarin Neville, who defended well against an island lineup that has been good all year. Um, I thought they managed to hold out pretty well for themselves last week. Two swaps in the back row for Fraser, McWright and Gleason comes in in replacement of uh, Hooper and Valentini we had last week. Jed Holloway remains at six. Jed Holloway again getting his hands on charge down kicks and stuff. The man is is ready to get himself involved with the charge down. Wales's box kick hasn't been the best um, for a couple games to be fair i wouldn't be surprised if dread holloway sees him get over there for a couple of charge downs fraser mcwright of course was uh, scoring tries in their game they had where they lost to italy uh but langley gleason will have to see how uh, how he makes an impact into this game because i think not having samu or valentini missing from from that starting lineup could be a bit of a shame i maybe would have liked to seen pete samu start here uh, but I'm sure Gleason will have a good game in the halfback partnership gordon comes in alongside ben donaldson who is a name um, I don't actually know. I just tried to look back at my notes. Um, I can't remember if he was the fly half that came on in that Italy game and missed the kick. I'm not entirely sure. It might have been Ben Donaldson, so we'll have to wait and see how he gets on. In the centre partnership, then, what a switch up here. Reese Hodge comes in alongside Len Ikitao. So kicking duties, man, they got the long-range kickers in there. Reese Hodge, I don't know if I've ever seen Reese Hodge play centre. Um, I normally think of him as a fullback. I know he can go on the wing. I have seen him do fly half. Centre new for me, but uh, after I it came back to this, sort of bite me in the butt a bit when I spoke about, I'm not sure how Geordie Barrett would get on at centre. I'm not going to say anything. So Reese Hodge <laughs> comes in at inside centre. A lot of injuries for them as well now in that inside centre. Uh, Fiketti is out alongside of uh, Paisami. Um, and I think a couple of other big names are missing from there as well. So Reese Hodge fills in at 12. Might be an area Wales will want to attack. I'm not sure if Reese Hodges that's, you know, verse in centres. I'm sure if we've got any Australian subscribers, they can drop down in the comments if I'm uh, completely wrong about that one. And then in the back three, then, the man whose name is quite difficult to say, Nawa Kunita Wase. Hopefully, sort of correct. I was trying to listen out last week to the, uh, the commentators, but a boy whose name I'm going to have to learn because... He was on it. He was having a good game last week against Ireland. Made a real nuisance of himself in that first half. Looking for the ball. Absolutely constantly a hard runner. Looks like a rough guy to take down as well. So I think he'll make a big impact to this game. Playing on Cuthbert's wing. I think Cuthbert's not necessarily the most renowned for his defensive capabilities. A lad like that going at him. You could be seeing tries coming on that left wing. Uh, so we'll have to see how he gets on there. But I think he did well. Maybe not the second half. He was a bit quiet in the second half versus Ireland. The game dissolved a little bit. But I thought for the first half especially, he was all over that one. And then on the right wing, we have Jordan Pattaya and Tom Wright in that fullback position. So overall, um, a couple of names are missing here. Maybe you would class this as like a middle ground Australia team as well. But the players they're replacing them with, I feel more confidence in <laughs> like reese hodge coming in at center might not be his natural place but you know he's a man with experience he's a man with talent he can come in there fraser mcwright still quite low on caps but we've seen him do well in games um so overall i might rate this uh, this australia starting team slightly ahead of the wales one but i'll let you guys drop down in the comments your thoughts on it and then in the replacements then lonigan comes in alongside of Robertson and Talakai. So we'll have to see how those boys get on. There's a few new names that have come in across this Australia team across this year, to be fair. So I'm trying my best to, to keep up with some of these new names coming in. No Taliella Tupo, who I think picked up a knock himself last week as well. We saw him we saw him go off with a little bit of pain. Um, so that's a bit of a blow for them. But their, their scrimmaging work last week against Ireland, they were managing to hold up for, for good portions of that game. In the rest of the replacement forwards there, Ned Hannigan comes in alongside Pete Samu. Um, the 5-3 here... I might have liked to have seen a 6-2. Maybe they've run out of forwards in Australia, to be fair, with the amount of injuries. I might have liked to have seen a 6-2 here because I think Wales backed their forwards so much last week against Georgia and it just didn't pan out and the backs weren't really making that much impact on the game. Um, I think maybe going for the 6-2 split might have been a move here because that way you could have loaded up your forwards, you could have loaded down the breakdown zones, you could have really made a mess of the set piece like Georgia did last week. Maybe I would have liked to have seen Australia go for the 6-2 here. And then the replacement backs, Tate McDermott comes in alongside Noel Olaseo, and Jock Campbell returns to the team. So overall, yeah, I would say it, the both teams are on like a bit of a middle ground at the minute with injuries and, and sort of performances they've had over the last few weeks. Um... I would say I'm more inclined to say this Australia team is slightly better. Uh, but then again, it's a game that Wales really needs to win, really needs to make a bit of an impact. Because I think 
I think people's jobs are on the line, so people will probably make um, a big impact in this one. So in terms of a score prediction, what do we think? What do we think for this one? I actually think I'm going to lean towards Australia for this one. I've got a real worry that some of those wingers are going to sort of walk around the Welsh wingers. So I'm going to say Australia to win. Um, and I'm going to say by six. I think is going to be my prediction. But make sure you guys do drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the game, the teams, and finally, your score predictions. If you are involved with the Super Brew, make sure you're getting them on as well before the weekend. Only two games this week. It's not looking like I'm going to win the Super Brew, but we'll see how everyone gets on. If you've enjoyed this one today, guys, remember to leave it a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I will see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.